So have you ever wondered what it is about the people on the screen behind me who are able to perform the extraordinary? How they redefine mastery in their field, defy conventional wisdom, and go on to show us not only what's possible for themselves, but for the rest of the world. This has been a question at the forefront of the field of human optimization for many years. It's been sort of the backbone of the program that we've been running for the past 30 years. Now, the question remains vague, and in many cases, it's still the holy grail, but we have made progress. We have made understandings and learnings that allow us to move people directionally in their, towards their dreams. To do that, we use these models. The representation behind me shows us that if it's an individual, a team, or an organization, you put them at the middle of the cogs, you define what's important, what's critical to success in that field, and you then have, through that understanding, you have actionable training items. Now, why these are very specific to craft and very specific to the individual, there are characteristics that transcend all fields and domains of mastery. And with your permission today, I'd like to explore that with you. The notion of thriving under adversity. High stakes environments, when everything's on the line, your career, your reputation, maybe your life, how do you bring the very best of you forward to give you the greatest chance of success in the space? So to give you an example, I want to start with a high stakes environment. <laughs> so the point being, one person's challenge is another person's hell. But the reality is, this is based on an ancient evolutionary mechanism. The flight or fight response, as you may, many of you may well know, represented by the curve behind me. For a certain level of arousal or challenge or threat, you rise to the occasion. You get excited, the blood starts pumping, you, get you move forward, and directionally your performance is very positive. For everybody and every person in every situation, you will reach a point where performance, de performance declines. If the threat or challenge exceeds your ability to meet it, you feel that horrible feeling, that gut-wrenching anxiety, that's when things start to go sideways. So this is the essence of what high performers are able to manage. We want to shift this curve up and to the right. And we do it very intentionally by pushing you just over that edge. We train in that space where, in the language of today, you're uncomfortable. We, the comfort zone, if you like, is the, the, the left-hand side of that curve. Uncomfortable risk is on the right-hand side of that curve. Now, the first thing I want to share with you is a very simple construct, but it's evident in all the elite performers we work with. They simply reframe any threat they face in their journey as a challenge. The conversation, oh my god, this could hurt me, or this is dangerous, or I'm scared, any mistakes I make or failures I have are going to uh, reflect on me as an individual. That's the wrong mindset. Shifting it to a challenge, what's the opportunity? Is this a chance for me to explore what I'm made of? Is it a chance to find out when I do fail, where I can work to get better? That's the fundamental thing we start with with all our elite pro programming. Get that construct right in your face. But we also have to train. And again, using the language of today, reframing the conversation will only get you so far. Training for disruption, if you like, or training for high-stakes environments, we use this basic principle behind us. You look at risk based on a perception of risk or actual risk. Actual risk being represented on the bottom, perceived risk being the vertical. And we always get the, try to train in the space where the perception of risk is really high, but the actual risk is low. Our training evolutions allow us to put you in a state where you feel like you're over the edge of that curve, but in the background, we're manipulating the situation so that we can give you a chance to train, practice, and even thrive in that state. If you have a, no perception of risk and the actual risk is really high, yeah, I've got that, that's a problem for us, so we always try and avoid that. If we move you progressively across the top of that curve, you end up in a position where the stakes are high, you understand the risk, and you're able to master yourself in that space. So to give you an example of what that looks like, I want to share with you this quick video. In this particular case, what's a high level of perceived risk? Public speaking, being on stage? Here we take public speaking and layer on top of it emotional vulnerability. Laughing and crying. Like we were saying, find your place and find your moment that triggers that emotion and just push it and push it and push it. And then switch, okay? All right, cry guys, cry. Actually getting up in front of a crowd and really letting go and actually showing emotions, laughing and crying and jumping around, screaming, all these 
energy exercises and all these different things, I felt like that to me was by far the hardest thing ever. Switch, laugh! That was close, man. <laughs> I really felt like... So it's a tough day. And as you said, he, uh, DK there referred to it as the toughest day ever. Now to show you the power of this training, this is DK's day job. I would consider that to be the toughest day ever, but again, everyone has their own path to carve in this, in this process. So you can see these tools have real power, and by doing it in an environment where we can control the setting and the training evolution, they can practice these skills, they can develop the ability to manifest or you know, th thrive under adversity, and through that training, they're able to execute back in their chosen domain. So assessment versus assumption. This is again a, a sort of related back to the evolutionary process. Humans have, an, uh, have a sort of inherent, innate sort of framework by which they will always fill in, in the absence of information, with worst-case scenario. So back to the savannah, the grass is rustling, it was probably in your best interest to get the hell out of there. Assume that you were going to get eaten. A key training element of what we're trying to imbibe on these elite performers is the ability to step back from that assumption and start off with a basic fundamental assessment. Now, it's easy when their stakes are low, but what you'll see here in this next video when I show it is where we've ramped, using a primal fear, and this video is self-explanatory, we've ramped the arousal right to the top, and you can see what happens with respect to their assessment. It brings you up, and in many cases, it, you need to be brought up to get ready to do what it is you're about to do. I knew I was scared of snakes, but um, I've never actually put myself in a position where I had to be near them. Remember the two things, slow movements, <laughs> low stress. At first, I, I was doing my deep breaths, and I almost didn't really sink in what I was doing. Apparently, I, I kind of charged. Everyone else was taking their time, and I just wanted to get through there. My heart rate went from sitting down beforehand at 37 to 170 while I was just crawling in there. Learning to face that kind of primal fear and having the experience of feeling probably the most fear I've felt and overcoming it and how amazing that feels afterwards just gives us the confidence to do that again and again. So before you convince your HR department to go and buy a box of snakes, <laughs> Of course, we, they're, top, they're top performers, so we need to ramp them over the top of that curve, which I, I, I think the heart rate of 170 sort of described that. But what's the assumption versus the assessment? What's the training opportunity there? Well, obviously, you walk up to a box of snakes, oh, hell, I'm going to die, kind of cross it over you, sort of through your mind. But the reality, the, the assessment will be, hey, Andy's always putting these tough training environments in front of us. By law, he's not allowed to kill us. He is probably going to challenge us in many ways. Maybe he has fed the snakes beforehand. <laughs> Maybe he has a bit of uh, elastic, clear elastic uh, wrap around their mouth so they can't bite you. So you see the opportunity here? Of course, the, she jumps straight to the uh, assumption, which is what we're trying to train out. So if you think about those sort of three basic skills, you know, you sort of reframe the threat as a challenge. You take the time and the moment to move from assumption to assessment. You're in the final sort of stage of the training, which is to respond versus react. The nuance here is a response moves you directionally and intentionally towards the goal you're trying to achieve. The reaction just has to, happens by random. Obviously, for elite performers, that can blend into the one, but that's what we're trying to get people to, that final state. And it's not just for the elites in sports like the ones you've seen behind me. In the day-to-day -day business, when someone challenges you or puts a question to you in a tough meeting, what is the threat? Is it a threat or is it a challenge? Is it an opportunity to grow and improve what you're trying to share? The assessment versus assumption. Do they really want your job? Or are they there trying to help you? Or have they had a rough day? Whatever that may be, you can use these tools and techniques to enable you then to respond appropriately versus walking out of that meeting going, oh, hell, I wish I hadn't said that. So you see how it kind of translates. Of course, um, Outside of the physical domain, creativity, innovation, entrepreneurialism. That's a huge uh, training environment for us, especially when we work with our musicians and artists in the culture program. What is it about being highly creative? Well, we've studied this through a platform called hackingcreativity.com. It's an online sort of global science experiment, if you like, in the topic. 
And what we've learned from these high-level creatives is that another word for creativity is courage. Having the courage to come up with that idea. Put yourself out there. Back the idea. So fundamentally, all those skills we've been training in these other high-stakes environments translate directly over to a creative environment. In fact, we encourage people who are trying to create innovation and creativity in their organization to leverage some of these fundamental skills and train people for that such that they are able to perform at their very best and come up with those new and innovative ideas. I did want to share with you a little bit of the science, so it's not always about boxes of snakes. It's literally a science of human optimization is progressing at a rate right now that we've never seen before. This is a psychometric test that we've developed internally. It looks at such things like courage, fear of failure, resilience, emotional intelligence, team ability, what I wanted to share with you today is this is two elite performers. In fact, two people on the screen behind me are best in the world at what they do. But their profiles look very different. And a big message from today is that even though the tools and techniques we use to help develop and help train people to thrive in these tough environments, to do the extraordinary, they create their own path. They get there their own way. The individualization of what we do is the, is the opportunity ahead of us. We have even gone to greater depths, pursuant to some of the conversations earlier today, sort of telomere length as a function of DNA. Are they born or bred, these high performers? The blue are the high performers at a recent training camp, the red are the controls. Again, directionally something there, but really nothing significant. So for us, this is truly empowering in that, hey, you may be born with some characteristics that set you up for success, to push beyond the limits, but ultimately it's up to you. What we do know, though, in the absence of understanding exactly what defines an extraordinary performer, is that the training is effective. The young lady behind me here, she went on probably our toughest training evolution. Eight days of spiritual, physical, emotional challenges, 24-7. FRMI pre and post the event, and you can see here her ability to cope with fear or respond under stress or anger improved significantly as evidenced by the FRMI. So the plasticity of the brain to adapt under challenge reflected in the training here. So you can make a difference, even if we don't know exactly why at, the, at this point in time. So the point is, to what end? Why do this? Well, I think the disruption we're facing is, as we term in our business, the evolution of evolution. For the first time in history, humankind is a position to understand elite performance in a way we've never been able to. And more importantly, we can impact it direct, directly. These new technologies, as they come online, are going to empower the, the majority of us to explore our own limits and our own human potential. For us, the opportunity ahead is the, is the democratization of talent. When we can take these cues and tools and techniques from the very best performers in the world, and we can share them with people solving our greatest challenges. We heard about the ocean today, climate, policy, medicine, disease, education. What if we took these skills and train the people working in those spaces just like we train the elite talent you've seen before me today. Even more importantly, what about that next generation? What if everybody in this room and the future and their kids could realize their dreams and we gave them the tools that allowed them when they face their toughest challenges, when they're trying to do the extraordinary and they come up against that significant failure, which they will have, if they're empowered to move through that with more success, even thrive under that state, and realize what they'd always dreamt of. To me, that's an extraordinary opportunity, and I think the future is less of a question mark because of it. So thank you very much today for your time. <laughs>